can I go back to can I go back to to, to your childhood? Just 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 paint me a picture. What 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 turned you into who you are? What what, what was your childhood like? Uh, hyperactivity, uh, anti hyperactivity drugs. Uh, two disinterested parents who conceived me probably via vodka. Uh, they're both uh, very intelligent, insanely hardworking overachievers who had a kid by mistake. They were politically at the uh, opposite ends of the spectrum, but they're both good looking and smart. So they probably met at some mixer and my mom probably started off like, hey, you fascists, let's do this. And uh, I was created and they got married for appearances sake. And as soon as I arrived, they bitterly divorced. And I was ping ponged back and forth between two households. And so at an early age, I realized, son, you're on your own. And uh, I just, Got graduated from high school, not wanting to ever see either one of them again, and ended up seeing my mother quite a few more times, uh, but just went into the minimum wage working world, meaningfully figuring, well, swollen feet and a sore back is going to be my life. And then I got a, a chance to audition for a band called Black Flag. And I went for it, as they say, and I got the part, if you will. And I left Washington, D.C. after 20.5 years of living there and jumped in the band in the van with a band and became a a resident of Southern California. And that was about 42 years ago. Was your childhood, do you think you turned angry because of what you went through as as a child? You know, you weren't weren't abused anyway, but to me, you're telling me you weren't overly loved. You didn't feel love. You didn't feel that sort of emotional connection. Uh, Well, uh, I was born and raised in Washington, D.C. in the early 1960s until 1981. And the racial tension in that city at that time was so thick, you you would break a knife trying to cut through it. And so having racism as part of your life, as in like running because you're a white kid, so the black kids don't beat you up, never made me a racist, but it was utterly terrifying. And having alcoholic parents who were abusive and kind of terrifying, one of them had some very abusive boyfriends who were, did not like me. All of that uh, was quite a lot for a, a young person, and I'm not complaining. A lot of young, a lot of people go through things. I certainly got put to the test, and so I spent about 18 or 19 years inhaling, like the bowstring being drawn back, and then at one point started the exhale, which is like the roar, and the bow is released or the arrows released from the bow. And that's uh, for me was music. It was the big exhale and it turned into lyrics and talking shows and books and trips all over the world. But so uh, the initial shot was uh, here it comes. And there I went. It was a powder keg that went pop, wasn't it? You, you were, you'd had all, as you, as you quite rightly described, you'd, it was, all this pressure built up and you went pop because you were angry. How different are you now? In, in your persona now compared to, you know, you take yourself back to 19, 20 when you were, when you were making your way there. You were, you were one angry bastard. Well, uh, I'm still angry, but I, I would like to think, at least I'm, I'm hoping, that it's far more focused. Because you, you can't be angry at everything all, all the time. I'm not angry at you. Uh, there's a, but there's a lot of things to be angry at. And I think, it, just for me, I'm trying to punch up, never down. And so... I'm angry at famine, uh, not not those who are hungry. I'm angry at homelessness, not the homeless. So my anger is hopefully steered towards good. My enemies are homophobia, racism, misogyny, uh, poverty, ignorance, not the impoverished or those put upon, and, and or not like a single person. There's no uh, no politician I want to beat up. I just think a lot of them should be thrown out of office or at least voted out of office. And so I'm still angry. I'm just not angry at someone writing me a bad review. I I say like, you know, write whatever the hell you want about me. I've got bigger fish to fry. As a 20 year old, I'd be like all angry that you don't like me. Now I I would rather you like me than not. But um, I don't care that much if you don't like me. In that I, I got other things to do. Uh, but I'd much rather you like me than not. Yeah, I think I like you. As, as a 20-year-old um, or a 21-year-old, you know, as you're making your way through the punk scene, if if you didn't like someone, you beat them up. I mean, you'd drag them onto the stage. Well, I I, I did not, have, like, start fights. 
Uh, in those days of low stages, no barricades and no front of stage security, people would uh, uh, give you a live uh, uh, opinion editorial by walking up and slugging you in the head. That means they don't like the guitar player's new songs. And they never, uh, they never went to him. It was always the singer they exacted their uh, anger at. And so fights were started upon this gorgeous face. Uh, and I had to answer just to get through the set. It's not like I roved the streets looking for people to beat up. Uh, that's just never been me. But I did get in a lot of fights in those days from the early 80s into the early 90s. And that was just having a, a pretty volatile fan base. But I never started it. You finished it, though, didn't you? Well, I tried to get through the show. And if that means uh, making someone submit or neutralizing them, hey, it's Tuesday night in Buffalo. <laughs> you're now, and where are you now? You, you're coming to us from Nashville, eh? You, you live in Nashville now? Yeah, I'm in Nashville hurtling towards senility, age 62. <laughs> and I walk a lot slower than I used to. Are you, are you mellow? Are you, are you, if you, you say you're angry, but you're angry at, 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 at situations. You're angry at, at um, what's happened to people, not angry at those people. You're angry at what's happened to them. Are you a more mellow angry now? Uh, I think more sensible angry in, in that I'm not going to get into a fight or an argument with someone in a parking lot because we disagree on global climate change being real or not. I'm just going to vote and stand up for those who uh, are being stood upon or can't stand up for themselves. Mm. What, what seems to be more and more people uh, in, in the world today, and I, th I think that you, you'll talk about this when you come to New Zealand. What, what can people expect from you when, when you come? You were here seven years ago, weren't you? Yep, and uh, it's the first chance I've had to get back to New Zealand, which I, I've had an amazing time in, in my many visits to New Zealand. Um, my law was 2018, and sadly it did not include uh, New Zealand. So 2016 probably would have been like around the last time I was there. Um, this will be the first tour I've done in a whole lot of years that was not partially informed by travel. And usually, if you've ever suffered through one of my too long on stage shows, there's a big centerpiece story, and quite often it is a travel story. Antarctica, Iran, uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, North Korea, uh, Central Asia, Southeast Asia, the Middle East, the African continent, all these places that I used to frequent, and then COVID. And so this is the first tour where I did not have the opportunity to travel to bring back the big story. Um, luckily or unluckily, enough turbulence was exacted upon me during COVID where I got a lot of crazy stories to tell, even though I didn't get a chance to leave Los Angeles very much. And so that's what's been the topics of this current tour. What's, what's, your, what's your big life-changing moment? What, what, was it, what, what was it that, that um, sort of set you on your ass or, or made you sit up and, and change or do something? Was there, was there a moment for you in, in your last 62 years? It, in my entire life, sure. It was getting the chance to audition for and join the band Black Flag because that took me from probably a future of minimum wage work or running a place that employed minimum wage workers and put me solidly into the entertainment business to be crass and allow me to exist as a creative type and which has led to a bunch of books i've written films i've been in television shows uh millions of records sold thousands of shows uh, all over the world traveling to about 90 countries etc cetera, etc cetera. otherwise i was a guy with an apron on uh, slinging ice cream at an ice cream store. So the big turn in my life was getting the chance to be in that band and what I did with it going forward. It, it seems to me, and it just listening to you and, and listening to you, what you've said in the past, and, and I think you said something along the lines of, you know, I've done okay for someone who couldn't sing a note and, and couldn't act. Uh, I think I've, I've, I've heard you say that before. Now, I reckon Ultra. you're too hard on yourself. I, 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 to, to me, it's almost like you don't believe in your talent, you don't believe in, believe in yourself. Um, and I wonder where that came from. Uh, in order to do better, uh, if I have any sense of uh, confidence, I think I won't see the school bus that might run me over. And so I try to exist with zero pride and uh, a zero sense of confidence. It, all I can do is what I can do every single day. So I think that leads me to uh, an idea that I must constantly prove myself not by trying to get over on you or anybody else, but it puts me in the gym six nights a week, one meal a day, and striving ever, ever uh, forward. 
And so I write a book. I've written a bunch. I, I get the book back from the printer. I look at it. I go, okay, I found a typo. Improve it. next, And then like got to write the next one. And so I finish a show. I take about a minute to go, okay, I did that. And then I'm like, okay, I got another show tomorrow. And so I don't, I don't dwell in applause. I don't bask in any kind of imagined light. I just get on to the next thing. And uh, never once do I think I got this. I think I better get it right. And so I live to serve my audience and I live to meet that expectation as best I can. So I, I, I don't, I'm not exactly a nervous person but I'm always kind of have my feet on the starting blocks or I'm executing the work that I promised that I would do. I reckon it's, um, I, I, it's interesting you say this. I, I'm, I'm, uh, you, you fear, you fear failure or do you, you fear going back to that, to a, to a working class wage or you fear going back to that, that minimum wage job that you talked about to me, to me, it's to me, you know, I, I'm I, from where I stand, I'm always trying to make sure that I'm in the now, you know, never, never look back at the last thing. You've got to achieve the next thing. Otherwise you're going to fall into a gap and you're going to slide down. Sure. You need to keep achieving. Is that, is that, is that where you're coming from? Is that, do you fear, do you fear going back to the ice cream parlor and having to work in the ice cream parlor? Well, I, I don't fear that financially. Uh, I fear failing an audience. I fear wasting their time. Uh, I don't fear failing myself too much. Uh, I do a lot of result-oriented things in that I write a book. I didn't write it so I could read it. I wrote it so you might read it. So it better be good because there's someone whose time I'm attempting to ask for. And so it must be good. I'm going to do a show. Someone trusted me with their night and their 30 bucks. And so I need to deliver. And so I fear failing those who trust me. So it's not about, you know, uh, it, this will sound funny, but hopefully you'll get the humor intended. I've survived uh, wealth. I've made a lot of money and I, I, I think I'm still pretty level headed. Yeah, you're in touch and you, you still want to achieve. You don't want to put on a, on a robe and some slippers and say, that's it, I'm out. You want to keep achieving? No, I, I want I want to pack my backpack and go head towards the tour bus and and go do a hundred shows in a hundred and three days is what I want to do. So what what, what are we gonna what what will we hear? What will New Zealanders hear when you come here um, shortly? What what will we get from you? Because you're you want to tell us something. You want to leave us with something. What are you going to leave us with? Uh, well, I've got a lot of stories that hopefully there's things in them that you can take away. But the overall takeaway is uh, this century has to end better than it began. And I'm not trying to be over serious or stentorian. Um, it has to end better than it began. And I, I think that you and I, and anyone that in earshot uh, is part of that. And that means eradicating homophobia or racism and misogyny and striving for equality and standing up for those, as I said before, who can't stand up for themselves or are being run over. And if, if, if you're not gonna do it, then, then who? And so it, be cool is not a directive. It, it's an elective. Like you're going to be cool or you won't. I can't make you. I can't make you do anything. And there's nothing that you can put into law to make you be an okay guy. That, that's, that's you. You're going to do your thing. I just hope it's a good thing. Because eventually uh, we're connected either by water or air or other resources. And the time is now. And so that's a pretty serious thing to say and i don't try to make the shows too serious but the overall takeaway is this this is it and we are the ones who are going to change it uh the history books are going to be full of what we got right or what we got wrong when you look at the stuff that you worry about I mean, and i've i've run a talk back shows before and and I would get homophobes calling in, or I'd get um, uh, people clearly racist ringing in, and and apart from having no no time for it like you, um, I'd question them, and I'd try and search for what their problem is with it. Can you what can you can you can you um, argue with someone who's homophobic? What do you tell them? What how do you turn them around? How how, how do you change them? Well, I think it, I, I'm I'm over sixty years of age and uh, a grown man, and not many of my opinions can you change. And one of the things I, I've been talking about on this tour is there's a lot of people who are unreachable and you're just going to have to wait for generational change in that you're going to have to wait for old people like me and Joe Biden to finally toddle off the coil because you're not changing my mind on pretty much anything. Uh, and so uh, those pe some people cannot be argued with. But, you know, a lot of those kind of hatreds and bigotries come from uh, damage that was done to somebody. Like, why does someone hate gay people? because he mistakes a gay person for a pedophile. 
and that person was acted out upon as a child. And maybe that person is lumped in homosexual people with pedophilic people. And that person, their trauma is real. The anger is real. However, it is misdirected. And I'm not a, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not, I don't have the time actually, but maybe someone needs to sit down with that person and maybe uh, gently unwire that bomb. And if just saying, shut up, you're wrong, that guy's going to double down. So if you yeah. really want to get to it, maybe you reconcile yourself to the truth that humans are really complex and maybe we're hyper not immune to abuse and we carry trauma like an elephant apparently carries memory. And maybe if we were not so abusive to each other on such a regular basis, so gratuitously, like via the internet, like just ganging up on people, maybe you would not in 30 years time see, well, in my country, more mass casualty events than days of the year. And that's how the United States rung in 2023. And I, I think it comes down to a lot of people have been wounded because humans are easy to wound, no matter what your macho grandfather tells you. Are you hopeful for America? I mean, Donald Trump's back on the scene. He wants to become the president again. Are you hopeful for, for where America is right now? Uh, hopeful for where it's going to be, absolutely, because uh, young people uh, are the ones who carry my optimism for me. I meet a lot of them, and I ask them, where are you at with this, this, and this? I said, they say, are you kidding? Like, you know, we're not taking it. You know, we're not, you know, and you know, I'm a lot like my, I'm a lot, uh, well, I'm sorry, uh, I'm very, not very much like my father. So I, me as the apple, I fell very far from the tree. I mean, he was a, a fantastic racist, an amazing homophobe and a record-breaking misogynist. And also, he's a PhD, he was a PhD, hardworking, hyper-intelligent guy. But Never he was too intelligent. He was too intelligent to be those things. He was too intelligent to be all well, those things you just described. Well, well that's what... That was the puzzle of that guy. He's dead now. Um, and I, that was like, so why are you like that? And maybe you can just say, he was a man of his time. It's not for me to defend bad behavior. Um, you know, dig him up and ask him. Uh, too late. And so maybe we can just start <laughs> correcting as we go forward. Like, you know, my, you know, the reason I didn't end up like him is because I would come home from those crazy weekend visits with him and I would tell my mom what he told me. She goes, okay, well, none of that's right. Let's listen to a Bob Dylan record. And so my mom <laughs> to the left of my mom was Joan Baez in a wall. And so I, I kind of listened to her more than I listened to him. I could have gone the other way, but uh, she had better taste in music. Wait, wait, how old were you when you died? Uh, I don't know. It was about two years ago. So 60, I guess. Right. Okay. Were you sad? Did you turn up to the funeral? What, what, what were your thoughts? I don't know. I didn't even know if there was one. I got an email uh, from someone in a senior care assisted facility. Uh, Henry, I hope this is your address. Uh, your father's here and he's dying and he wants to make contact with you. Uh, if you want to make contact with him, here's my number and I'll, I'll put the two of you together. And I just wrote back to this guy. He's just the messenger. I just wrote back, noted and hit send and deleted the email. Oh, wow. And, and apparently he died like 12 days later and uh his crazy wife my stepmother wrote me uh the first time i've spoken with her well connected with her since reagan was president and she said uh this is your father's widow and that's how she told me she hated my guts too uh this is your father's widow if you have any questions please write me at this address and i just wrote back sorry for your loss and hit send and deleted that email as well and I went right back to what I was doing, which was editing a book that came out last year. Um, did you hate him? No, I just don't. You know, life is too short for people like that. And so uh, I split. You know, I, I, uh, I last time I saw him was uh, the, the night of my 18th birthday. And he took me out for a steak dinner. And um, I, I thought about him as I'm looking at him, as I'm eating this piece of red meat. And I thought, I never have to see or talk to you again. I'm an adult. And I never did see him again. What was that comment that he but that he said to you? And I hope I get this right. But was it, never, never, was it never go for pussy with hair shorter than you? Was that your father? Uh, I'm glad you I'm glad you said it so I didn't have to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's a podcast. You can say these things. Eh? Well, it's, I, I just, you know, I just never want to have. I, I did say it. No, that is true. Uh, and, but he, the, 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 one of the many problems with that statement is, uh, he said that to me when I was about eight or nine years of age. Yes. <laughs> and that's a, sure. that's a lot of adult gear for a little kid. 
because then you have to go back to the apartment and ask mom what that means. And that's when you're relegated to your room for 17 years. And so <laughs> there's a lot of really rough information that was coming down the pike. Um, I could talk to you for days. Cause I find you so interesting and fascinating with great stories. Um, just one, one, one final question. Would you go sure. back into music? Would, would you, would you go back into a band? Would you, do, do you want to? Oh no, no. Oh, uh, I do. I try to be as decisive with things as possible. Uh, about 128 years ago, I woke up. I was living in Hollywood and I woke up and I went, wow, I'm out of lyrics. And I thought it I'm like, yep, I'm done. And I called my manager at the time. I said, I'm done with music. And he was really enjoying 10 percent of that action. And in one phone call, I said, I'm done. And I, I didn't go back because uh, I didn't. If I don't think lyrically, then if I can't write a new record, then I just turn into an old hits machine and uh let me let you in on a big secret about me i don't have any hits and so <laughs> i don't want to be like some wounded aging jukebox singing a young man's music so i abruptly stopped and i n have never thought about it again hey you're a fine man and i appreciate your time and uh, and really admire what you do you're amazing okay thanks take care see ya take care bye-bye thank you